Hello and welcome to this lecture in the course for secure systems engineering. In the previous lecture, we had actually looked at a buffer overflow in the stack and we seen how that vulnerability or rather that buffer overflow can be uh, exploited. It can be used to subvert execution and uh, an attacker could write a payload and force that payload to execute. So essentially what uh, the attacker would do was overflow the buffer so that the return address which is present on the stack is overwritten. Now the return address is overwritten with an other location on the stack and in that location uh, the attacker has written a payload and uh, this payload would then execute. In this lecture we will look at two uh, prevention techniques. One is called canaries while the other one is called the NX bit or the non-executable stack. Both these defense techniques are very popular and have been incorporated in all compilers and systems uh, that are in use today. So let us start this lecture. So uh, let us talk about canaries. So canary is a compiler uh, defense mechanism. Essentially what the compiler does is that whenever a stack frame gets created, the compiler would insert a canary in the stack. So note that in this particular figure, we show the stack, uh, show the stack of the program. As we have seen before in the previous lecture, uh, the stack would contain the function parameters, it would contain the return address, uh, then it would have a frame pointer and then the local variables for that invoked function. So essentially what uh, the compiler would do is insert a canary over here. Now what is a canary? Now a canary is essentially a random number uh, which the compiler picks from a particular uh, random store and inserts it over here. Now uh, whenever or if any of these two buffers overflow that is buffer 1 or buffer 2 overflows and it crosses the canary, then the canary value will be modified. Now at the end of the function, the compiler would detect that there is a change in the canary value that is it would throw an error that and that uh, it will throw an error stating that the stack has been modified. So if we look at this particular small function over here, uh, which essentially uh, creates the stack frame, it pushes the stack uh, frame pointer EBP onto the stack that corresponds to this and then there is a changing of stack frame that is the current stack pointer is uh, moved to base pointer and then the stack pointer is decremented by 16 bytes to give space for the uh, local variables. Now uh, this is a function uh, without canaries. Now in compilers which support canaries additional instructions are present uh, at this particular point uh, where uh, uh, instructions are present to add or insert a canary over here and just before the return statement more instructions are present so that uh, so as to ensure that the canary has not been modified. Most of the compilers support canaries. The compiler that we are using in this course that is GCC also has support for canaries. So in some compilers, the canaries are enabled by default while in other compiler, other versions of the compiler, uh, you would have to give an explicit uh, uh, compilation flag that would uh, enable canaries to be inserted within functions. Some compilers also use heuristics to insert canaries. For instance, if a compiler finds that in a function there is a potential for a buffer overflow, only then the canaries are inserted. In order to enable uh, canaries in uh, versions of GCC which do not support canaries by default, you could add this compilation option minus f stack protector. So adding this minus f stack protector is an indication to the compiler to add canaries to the functions. So let us see how the canaries actually work internally with a small example. So we will take this particular example where uh, there are just two functions, one the main function and then 
another function called scan and the main function is just invoking scan and then returning. Now in the scan function we uh, declare a local buffer of 22 bytes and as we know since it is a local uh, variable uh, this array gets allocated in the stack. So then now we invoke the scanf function which reads a string from the user. So note that this particular scanf function is a potential for a buffer overflow. The reason is that the user could uh, enter a large string which is much larger than 22 bytes and therefore buffer 2 can overflow. Now uh, let us look at the stack. So when the main function invokes the scan function, uh, this is how the stack is going to look like. So there is the return address pushed into the stack. Uh, this corresponds to the address soon after the scan instruction in the main. Uh, then there is the previous frame pointer uh, pushed onto the stack uh, which will enable the frame to change when uh, the scan function gets returned. Then the compiler would insert a canary and there would be uh, 22 bytes of space for the buffer 2 to be present. Now let us see what would happen when we run this program and give a large input which is much larger than 22 bytes. For example, we compile this particular program like gcc canaries 2.c minus o0. Now in this uh, particular version of gcc that I have used for compiling, canaries are inserted by default. However, this may not be the case for all GCC versions, in which case you have to put the minus f stack protector uh, as an option during compilation. Now when you run this particular program, uh, main call scan, a scan call scanf and it prompts the user to enter a string. So what we have done here is we have entered a very large string, uh, much larger than 22 bytes. As you know what scanf does is that it would fill the buffer 2 with this particular string. Now the ASCII value for 2 in hexadecimal notation is 32. Now what happens here is that this value of 32 gets filled in the stack. Uh, it starts off with filling buffer 2 and since we are exceeding the 22 byte limit of buffer 2 there is a buffer overflow and we note that the canary value gets changed. So whatever canary was there present is now overwritten with 32, 32, 32 and 32. Similarly the other data on the stack including the return address and the frame pointer gets overwritten with 32s. Now when the scan function returns what happens is that the compiler has added code that detects whether the canary value has changed. As a result, you would get an output which looks like this. You see that there is a stack smashing detected and the program is terminated. So note that there is one thing over here which shows that the program has terminated at this particular location 0x804847a and the value of the canary which has been modified was 32, 32, 32, 32. This is indeed what uh, was present in the stack due to the buffer overflow. So the result of the stack smashing detection would also provide the memory map of that particular program at the point of termination. So now let us uh, dwell a little more deeper into what actually happens with canaries. So over here uh, on this part of the slide shows the assembly code for scan without canaries enabled while on the left side shows the uh, corresponding assembly code that gets compiled with canaries enabled. So you notice over here that without canaries the, the number of instructions are very less. Uh, note that as usual there is a stack frame that is created uh, and then there are uh, some parameters which are going to be set for scanf and then there is an invocation to the scanf. This particular instruction call um, ISO C99 scanf uh, would invoke the scanf function from the library and then there is a return uh, from the function. Now when canaries are enabled there are a few extra instructions that get added. More precisely we have three instructions 
uh, at the start of the function and uh, two instructions that gets inserted at the end of the function. Now this set of three instructions essentially loads a random canary uh, into the stack. So the random value which is going to be present in the canary is obtained from this particular location gs colon 20 that is in the segment pointed to by the gs and at an offset 20 the random data which is present over here which is essentially uh, that segment has is a random store. So we are taking some random data from there moving it to the EAX register and then storing the contents of the EAX register into the stack. Now at the location EBP that is a frame pointer minus 12 bytes is where the canary location is present. Now at this location we are storing the contents of EAX which is the random value for the canary. Then we are having an XOR instruction which essentially uh, makes the EAX register 0. Now we have the rest of the instructions as was here before and at the end just before the return from the function there is a check which is done to detect whether the canary has changed or not. Now the check essentially would load the canary value from the stack that is at location EBP minus 12 into the EDX register and then it would check whether the contents of the canary has changed. So this is done by checking whether the XOR of the original data present in GS colon 20 is the same as uh, that in the EDX register. It would mean that the um, now if it is the same it would mean that there is no change in the canary and uh, the function returns successfully. On the other hand if at this point the, we detect that the canary has indeed changed it would mean that the XOR value would return uh, something which is non-zero and then there would be a call to this particular function called stack check fail. Now stack check fail is a built-in function which essentially would uh, print out this particular output which tells you the exact information about um, where the stack smashing was uh, detected and so on. An other defense mechanism uh, is implemented in the hardware by the pro processor manufacturers. So this is called the non-executable stack or the WXRX bit. So what this means is that for a particular segment, for example the stack segment, one can either write to that particular segment or uh, execute from that segment. So for example, if you can write to a particular segment, it would mean that you cannot execute from that segment. On the other hand, if we can execute a segment, we cannot write to that particular segment. So let us see why this uh, thing would work. So recollect that in the previous lecture when we uh, looked at the buffer overflow and how the uh, attacker wrote his payload in the stack and then executed that particular payload is that the attacker was able to inject code by writing to the stack and then executing the stack. Now with this non-executable stack uh, one of these two is not possible. So if you write to the stack it would imply that you cannot execute from that stack. So both Intel and AMD processors support these non-executable stacks. On Intel processors this is uh, called as the NX bit while in the AMD processors this is known as the ND bit. So the NX bit or the ND bit uh, is present to mark the non-code regions as non-executable. Thus the stack of uh, the particular program would be having its NX bits set which would mean that you could write to the stack but you cannot execute from that stack. Now by chance if let us say the payload is trying to execute from that particular stack then an exception gets raised and the code will terminate. So uh, the NX bit support from the OS perspective has been supported from the Linux kernels uh, since 2004 and also Windows XP Service Pack 1 and Windows XP Service Pack 1 and Windows Server 2003. So this is called the data execution prevention. Now you would note that this is a very efficient way to prevent the attack. 
uh, the reason is that all that is required is just one bit for a page and this bit is incorporated in the uh, page directory and page tables for that particular process and it is just that single bit which is sufficient to actually prevent the attack. However, uh, there are several non-malicious programs which actually would need to execute from the stack. For example, the Java just-in-time compiler would construct assembly code based on some external data and then execute it. Now, for such uh, applications, the code gets constructed on the stack before it gets executed. So, these applications would not complete if the, the NX bit gets set. So, in order to actually uh, run these particular applications on a processor uh, with NX bit enabled, uh, it would require you to disable this NX bit before it, this particular application can work. Therefore, while this is a very efficient way uh, to prevent this buffer overflow attacks, there is also a downside present where certain types of applications do not complete. So, both these defense mechanisms, the canaries as well as the NX bit are incorporated in most modern systems. So, quite likely if you try to run this particular code uh, on your latest for example, Ubuntu systems, you would get a stack smashing getting detected and this particular code will not run. However, in order to make it run, we would have to disable these particular defenses and the way to do that is by compiling uh, uh, this particular program with certain options so as to disable these stack protection and the NX bit. The way to do it is by specifying minus F no stack protector which would uh, disable canaries and minus Z execute stack which would permit execution from that stack. When this is done, you would get uh, an executable a dot out and this a dot out should successfully run on your machine. Now, uh, you can refer to this code in this particular directory and uh, compile it with these options and then uh, see this particular program executing and uh, have the payload running and the shell getting created successfully. So, before we complete this lecture, there are some points that you can think about. Now, when we consider this particular example of the main and scan and uh, we consider that when you use scanf, uh, we have given a very large input of uh, all twos. Now, what would happen to the execution when the canaries are not enabled for this particular program? That is, in this very specific program, suppose you have compiled it without canaries being enabled that is for example, using the minus f no canaries option uh, during compilation, what would be the result of this particular program. So, this is something to think about uh, until the next lecture. Thank you.